And my uh, my addition to the heirloom will be this guy because wow. I bought this new when I was 15 and it looks older than a real 50s Telecaster. So yeah, and you could like scrape this off and clone me. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> that is all Will Neck DNA right there. <laughs> so many dead skin cells. Sweat. <laughs> scrape it well, off and clone literally. me. Welcome to Talk Culture. I am Kid Cadet. Kid Cadet? Oh my gosh, I forgot my name. Anyway, <laughs> I'm super excited. We got a little crossover action tonight. Tonight, joining me, he is the host of the Milo Beasley Show. It's the one and only Milo Beasley. How you doing, bud? I am good, Kid Cadet. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> overwhelming guys i'm so glad that we made this happen and so let's just get this party started so bringing to the stream this is actually his 10th appearance believe it or not we are welcoming back otherwise known as allison chains it is matt novetsky <laughs> it's <c> <laughs> <laughs> I think I had like a glitch in the matrix I think yeah that's what happened. <laughs> it's it's I mean 10 times wow I know. That's, that's more times crazy. than I've been on the show. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's like co I know. I'm yeah. uh yeah. I should just be co-hosting at this point, I think. All right. Yeah. Well, do you want to <laughs> do you want to bring up the next the next guest then, Matt? And next, we uh, actually uh well, we've got two other guests. I don't know. Yeah. I, I would be guessing as to who is to who it is. So. Oh, I mean, we can keep people on their toes. You can pick yeah. one Does of it, the two. Uh I I'm going to go with Ryan Knack. No, I'm just kidding. I'm gonna go with uh, let's go with Ryan Delahousy. Ryan Delahousy's up next. Hey everybody. We're gonna confuse our, our uh, let's see. Confuse her over there. Let me guess who it's gonna be. Let's see. Oh, it's me. Uh, Hi it's guys. You. How's it going, Ryan? Great, kid, 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 cadet, and Milo. Thanks so much for having us on tonight. What's Absolutely. up, Matt? What's How up, dude? Doing Look at well. all those instruments. Yeah, I know, right? I'm just like, which one am I gonna play? It's crazy. It's like Guitar Center in your house. <laughs> right. So many I, options. You know, I gotta say, uh, that intro music you got going on there is pretty good, kid. Uh, I would say it's pretty damn good. Thanks to our buddy over here, one half of Icarus Bell as well. Yeah, yeah it's quite James. familiar. Gotta love that song. <laughs> Ten yes. time Matt. <laughs> Ten time Matt. Oh, well, this is great. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Ryan. Do you want to bring up our final guest? Oh, it's the one and only Mr. Will Knack. Guitar extraordinaire. There he is. What's up? I, I found out the German pronunciation is Kid Cadet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to say, baby. We can't talk about it. Oh, man. Oh, this is amazing. Well, thank you guys so much for making this happen. And it's been about a year since we've done this, and a lot has certainly happened in a year. And uh, I guess let's yeah. just go into this that you guys are getting ready to go back on the road. It is finally happening, folks. We are so excited. So for each of you, what would you say is one word to best describe how you guys are feeling about being back on the road? Matt, do you wanna? Relieved? <laughs> yeah, right. I, You know, I like, not to be cheesy, but um, uh, I, I think it was Tom Petty, like did an interview and he said, you know, I never really felt comfortable 100% comfortable anywhere except for on the road or in the studio. And I kind of relate to that, you know, to some degree. Um, like, I, I and, and, and um, not that I haven't enjoyed being home and I haven't enjoyed getting to spend a lot of time with my kids because that's been this beautiful thing. And I really bonded with uh, my youngest, which I didn't have the opportunity to do that before this whole thing happened. Um, but I am so used to like the cycle of touring and I'm so used to like, okay, I'm home for a couple months. And now it's like, it, it's that time again. It's like, it just becomes part of your, your internal clock. I guess it's like, I'm ready to hit the road. I'm ready to be out there mingling and meeting people and playing on stage and getting that, like that therapy that I get from playing with, you know, with my brothers on stage in front of a crowd. And then like having it stripped away is just, I honestly, I feel relieved that it's around the corner. I just like, it's not, it's not like, oh, yay, this is fun. That's going to happen. It's like, oh my God, this is so necessary. Yeah. Like I have to have it. Yeah. Ryan, what about you? Uh, I, I don't know. I, 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 I kind of feel a little apprehensive about it, you know, I, and, but in a good way, because like Matt said, you know, this is what we've done for 20 or so years, you know, with our lives. <laughs> yeah. and, and we're only 19, you know? It's and, crazy, uh, man. It's crazy how that works. <laughs> that time machine, yeah. 
but the, <laughs> the weird part about it is is that we've been sort of cooped up and alone for so long that it's like i don't know how i'm going to react around people i mean i know i'll get along great with the guys because we've been together and we've done our live stream shows and, and whatnot which have been amazing but being around people it's like it's like oh you know i'm like i'm not quite sure of the do I smell or whatnot? You know, and sorry. You smell fine from here. Yeah. <laughs> smell a vision, right? It's good stuff. <laughs> this will be where you you stick out your hand to shake and is this yeah, is like elbow or is it, is it like ah, yeah? You know? But I, I'm so excited. You know, we released a record, God, 13 months ago, and it's like, wow. you know, we we're gonna have to perform it in front of people, and so I'm super excited about that. We've been writing like crazy, and so we. we I don't know. I'm I'm very excited. I will say, but yeah, I'm not quite sure how the first few shows are going to go. I'm sure we'll just fall right back in it. I know the one thing that uh, we as a band we all agree is that we definitely deserve some bunk time. You know, we crawl oh, out yeah. of the caves and we we'll pull the curtain shut and we just sleep so good on tour. It's uh, it's going to be great. Oh my god, I love it so much! And I also love that the three of you coordinated your black shirts tonight. So that was. <laughs> <laughs> Very impressive. <laughs> well, yeah, um, <laughs> you know, I got, they got you know the V neck. Well, no V neck over here, and then I've got long, the cut. Yeah, long covering all bases. <laughs> I didn't get the memo, guys. Sorry. Yeah, so. <laughs> you're looking, looking good, Milo. Milo. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would I'm say grateful. And yes, all the things they were saying. You don't know how much you miss something till it's gone. In a lot of cases right and i i knew how much music means to me it's it's absolutely just at the core of my being but having it stripped away you 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 just don't have that same perspective any other way and uh just the, even the five show run we did in texas it was just wow so good to be back i remember when we walked on stage that first night and you see everybody it almost makes you want to tear up you know mm -hmm. uh and they had the same feeling too because they're like wow we're here and that that could that catharsis that energy that energy exchange man we've been missing that musically and even just societally like haven't been able to see friends haven't been able to see family it was that we did uh we couldn't go see my dad for thanksgiving or christmas because he was you know he's old and didn't want to deal with that and, and same with emily's family and just that's that's crazy but getting back to the music thing just being able to get back up and do it it's absolutely crucial so grateful that we're going to get to do it yeah it's so exciting and i know milo's going to the orlando show i'm going to the tampa show i see people all over saying kansas city all of their cities and yeah one of the things i'm not sure whether it's the next year tour with the goo goo dolls are you guys playing red rocks for the first time is that something that's happening I Is hope it so. <laughs> it's 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 on the schedule. It's on the calendar. So fingers crossed because Ooh. that is the plan. Yeah, and that's been like exactly. every time. Every time somebody asks you for one, uh, like what's the one place you wish you could play you've never played? I always answer Red Rock. So that's a bucket list for me. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> yep. There it is. Some handsome dudes right there. Hey, if it's on the if it's on the schedule, they can't take it away, right? Uh, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> not anymore. Believe, it's, believe me, I know. <laughs> yeah, no, Milo, you touched on something a minute ago. It's kind of funny about the whole handshake thing. I'm still dealing with that because I have I have a business, and so it's like whenever somebody I haven't met comes in, I'm like at that point where I'm like going in for a hug, and I'm freaking people out still, man. People are like, ah, back off. So, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Now, Ryan, you mentioned the, the new album that you that you released 13 months ago. Uh, I mean, you have to be super excited to finally be able to play it. Is there a particular song that you guys are looking forward to playing live for an audience for the very first time? Um, off the new record, I would have to say probably Only Lost Is Found or Love Stupid, uh, just because it's it's very energetic um in general um some of our previous record i mean I, I like all the hard rock stuff like shake it up uh i think we're gonna be playing uh of course i hope you're happy oh my my uh so yeah just a few right there i'm sure the guys uh, would agree with some of the, the more rock and stuff it's fun to just get it out right oh yeah Agreed. i'm i'm looking forward to this is what i live for oh i can't wait to play that one live just 
Like one of my favorite live songs that we do is Cole Makes Diamonds and it's like always on our set list. And I think it's because the way it just starts with that cool beat, you know, and this is and like this song to me has that same kind of vibe to it. So I can't wait to see how it goes over live. That's no, a, I totally uh, get that. I like those songs too. Um, also, Fight for Love will be a fun one. I know mm -hmm. that's on the set list. I'm ready to rip up Love Stupid though and try and see if I can do the solo that I did because that thing is like, <laughs> one of a kind there's to be like i'm gonna do it differently every night maybe a little bit it's just one of those things so yeah. I mean, one of the yeah. greatest guitar solos ever Ooh, and weatherman Agreed. yes i'm excited weatherman. About that too. weatherman yeah yeah uh one of the little side notes i wanted to mention uh my husband actually made it into the video for moving on his yeah. Hands, yeah i saw that his hands made it into the video so <laughs> that's awesome yeah, he's a hand model. So if you see those hands at a concert, make sure, I guess, don't shake them, but say hello. Right. Um, <laughs> he has so. nice hands. <laughs> like David Duchovny and Zoolander. Yes. Oh, yes. Good reference. There well, you go. uh, <laughs> <laughs> so is there, and I hope I'm okay asking this, and obviously you don't have to answer, but is there any insight to like who the opening band will be? Um, I don't know if we even know that. Okay. No clue. I haven't asked. <laughs> of course, a lot I, of that I, stuff we're not privy to until the last minute, right? <laughs> you just I, sort of, oh, okay. Okay. I, I don't will care. Say. As long as we play a show, <laughs> you can come open with the banging on a trash can. I don't care. <laughs> right. Opening Tr night on today. Street the trash can, man. I'm actually opening the show. Oh, oh, you and me. Yeah, Ryan and me are gonna mud wrestle before every concert. That would be awesome, actually. actually I would yeah, watch that. Would, yeah, I'm. I'm. Yeah, I'm up for watching that. A little mud wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> I love that we're saying meeting place Icarus Bell, Harvard of the South. Okay, that's. I mean, all well, fantastic options. <laughs> we'll do a festival like that one of these days for sure. Yeah. We do all of our projects. Yes. We were talking about that. Fourteen. Yeah. 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 Amazing. Now I'm uh, gonna get I'm gonna get a little okay. personal here. So I am a father of an 11 month old. Congratulations! So I have to ask, with Nova being the newest member of the Blue family, is she gonna see any of the upcoming tour? Well, uh, don't know particularly, but I will tell you that she has got to come to her first Blue October show. We did it at the Hot Spot in cedar park which is right near austin great new venue i really enjoyed that place and uh all the kids were out there it was father's day so uh it was a really special moment just seeing all the kids there and it, it was yeah overwhelming i i another here i am i sound so beclimped or whatever but i was <laughs> teared up she was she she was getting fussy right before and then she just like pulled it pulled it together and she stuck around for like 45 minutes of the show and I remember looking over there and I was like, oh, man, I'm about to cry, you know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, she already has. But I, I'm sure we'll we'll figure out one that she can come to close. So we're not playing any Austin shows in the fall, right? Well, no, I think we got was, Dallas and Houston. Was that was mm -hmm. right. Austin show. So we'll, we'll figure it out. I, I have to agree with what Will said. Like, it was pretty amazing. Like, you look out, and this is one of the, the first show. I think it's probably the first show where all of our kids – we're together. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of them, you know. Yeah, every one of them. Because you know, That's Justin. Awesome. Justin has like thirty-five kids, and so <laughs> um, we're, all, we're all together, right? And, uh, yeah. and some of our kids are old enough now to like actually get what's going on. And uh, I think th I looked around the stage while we were playing, and most of us were looking over at the kids more so than interacting with the crowd. Yeah. Justin's up there <laughs> dancing, looking at the crowd, and I'm I'm, uh, I'm over here looking at my kids and. And Matt's kid at Nova, and, and uh, it, was, it was pretty special. It takes me back to um, years ago. My favorite, one of my favorite kid moments is when we were playing Auditorium Shores, uh, in front of like ten thousand people. And Avery, Matt's daughter, uh, walks out. I think she was probably like three or so. And she just yeah. walked out on the stage, no fear of like what was going on out there. And, <laughs> and, uh, it's it it pretty awesome. I, I actually have. It's funny you bring that up, man. I have a picture the best picture from that show of her and uh i just put it in a frame yesterday that's really <laughs> yeah. funny that you bring that up yeah that was, yeah. A that was awesome so yeah, it was great. fun times having kids around mm -hmm. cool. 
Amazing. Well, one of the things that has kept Milo and I together, like, but separate, I guess, over the past year or so is you guys were doing these incredible virtual events and they've just been like so spectacular. I know everyone watching that had the chance to see you guys perform these virtual events. I mean, from the way it was set up to the backdrop, everything was so beautiful. But do you guys like plan to continue to do these virtual events or is that something that, you know, kind of just help pass the time or what, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I, I personally feel like these events are here to stay for everybody. I think that everybody, re like, I think that a lot of bands, especially like bands uh, uh, around our age, <laughs> a little older. 19? Um, oh. Are, are yeah, 19, 19 right? yeah, you know, like 19, 20. Um, <laughs> are, are hesitant sometimes to do those things just because you get used to like the touring cycle, I guess, and the touring life and like, oh, no, no, this is how you do it. But um, with like YouTube and how massive YouTube is and like seeing how like my daughter, for example, instead of going and watching TV, she's on YouTube watching YouTube. Like it's just a different world now. And I think that a lot of bands and a lot of younger artists have been saying for a while now, like, no, 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 this is like this is part of how you do it. And I think that bands that are um, maybe a little older or bands who have been around a long time that are established have been like, well, maybe afraid to take that leap or afraid to do that as a regular part of their, uh, their gig. And I think that it's like, because we were forced to do it and all of us were forced to do it over the last year, we all realized not only is it possible, but it's actually really fun and it's, and you can do it in a really cool way and make it unique and special. And like, I think that everybody, I think everybody, not just us, but I think every band realized like for the most part, I really enjoy doing this. I really like doing these live stream events and I like doing things where it's a production and, and it's more of a studio kind of environment. Like I think that we'll do them. I don't think we'll do them obviously as often as we have over the last year, but I do think that we'll do them pretty fairly regularly. I would, I would assume. And I, I also think that like, especially the last one, in my opinion, the one that we did with Matt Pinfield, like, I feel like that has such a vibe to it that like doing things that are a little more planned out, a little more thought out like that to translate really well, you know? So I think that we, like we have a leader in this band that is like, just, he's always on 11 and he never stops. Like his clock <laughs> is just constantly doing this, you know, I think he's going to have ideas like that, that we're all going to be excited about probably till we're too old to play. So we'll do it. I, I have to ask, how was it playing with the legendary Matt Penfield. Wow, what a force. I mean, the, we we met him, um, gosh, I can't even remember, 2007, maybe 2007. I think it, yeah, I think it was 2007. Yeah, and um, so when when uh, Four World Record was, was really churning and, going, and VH1 and all that kind of stuff. And so uh, then we played uh, Lollapalooza and got to hang out with him and did some on-camera stuff with that and then sort of became friends, you know, and, and I know him and Justin were, were close uh, throughout the years. And, but seeing him again, it was almost like no time had passed. And, and he's such a, a smart guy, very wise. And, and then of course it's Matt Penfield. So you're like, Oh, how was this band? And how was it talking to Kurt Cobain? And like, you know, and I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, okay, don't ask him too many questions. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but he, but on uh, adversely, he was excited to be with us. And that was very humbling. And oh, you could tell he was genuinely a fan. You know, he's followed you guys, like you said, since, gosh, the 2000s. So, yeah. Yeah. So that was that was definitely a, um, a, a very cool moment to, to that. To obviously, none of us will forget. And now we have it recorded. And, and so it's there forever. I, like Matt said, when we can't play anymore, I'll be going back and going, ah, remember that time? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I, that's incredible. Definitely. Awesome. Uh, and documented forever. And documented forever, right. Yes. I think that's the coolest thing about the Get Back Up TV is like any time that I want to go watch any of your performances, I got them on lock, you right. know? Yeah. Well, I was going to yeah. say that with, with uh, if I can add on to what Matt was saying about the live stream stuff, not only, you know, I think would expect uh, for us to continue to do those things, but I also think that, um, you know, some sort of integration into the live aspect of it where we take that live stream and we also bring a little bit of on the road with us. So mm -hmm. to keep the fans engaged, not only from a live stream performance point of view, but also from a live stream sort of uh, daily activity type thing. So get back up TV is that portal for 
everybody to go and check out what's happening with Blocktober on a daily basis. So look for that in the future as well. Awesome. Yeah. Well, one of the other things that we wanted to ask about, Ryan, was you were recently playing, was it Will's great-grandmother's violin? Oh, the, the Hazel. Oh, man. The well, Hazel. What, what, what was that like, like getting to play something that belonged to, you know, Will's great I mean, what a moment. So, uh, as you probably can't tell, I'm an instrument freak, and, and I... Not at all. Uh, I, <laughs> I, you could have one or two behind you that would help us. <laughs> I wish I had four, four arms and I could just play them and hold them. And, uh, years ago, I, I decided that I would uh, just start collecting because there's so many great instruments. And, and I, uh, I love finding old instruments and sort of restoring them. And I found um, quite a few uh, that surprisingly enough, they're in horrible condition and just a little bit of love. They've come back to life and... And God, if they could speak, you know, if they had like the ability to obviously tell a story besides the musical story of how they got here, you know, how they ended up in my hands. Um, and so that pursuit, uh, I, I, and that's a trip over my words too much, but make it too long drawn of the story. But when I do the string arrangements for Blue October, I am sort of the orchestra, right? I, I stand and, and I, not to give my secrets away, but I play all the instruments, right? And so I try to use different instruments to give that variance in the sound and the timber of the different instruments. So I'm always looking for another instrument to add to the arsenal. And uh, if you go back through my Instagrams, uh, you can see that when I list the arsenal and I'll take a picture of the instruments I'm using at the time. And so I try to change them out. And so when Will, he started playing his on his Instagram and everybody's like, oh, Will's learning to play the violin. I was like, yeah, right, he can play the violin. Put anything in that man's hand and he can play it. And so anyway, he brought it to the studio uh, last week and um, I picked it up and just started playing it and it just exploded. And I was like, wow, wow what an instrument, you know, uh, almost a hundred years old, if not a hundred years old, you know, you get an instrument like that. It's hard to place the date on it because it's handwritten in there, you know? And so I was like, let's do this. Let's use the hazel. And wow, I actually used it more than I do my trusty old favorite. And so um, I was very excited to play that instrument. So. Thanks, Will, for bringing along the Hazel, and I hope she continues to be a part of uh, the Blue October sound for years to come. So, yeah. Uh, absolutely, That's man. Cool. It was it was an honor to get to have that moment. And, uh, you know, the the music on my f family side comes from my grandmother. Supposedly, she was amazing. Like, my dad's good. She was supposedly way better. But by the time I came around, she was already suffering from Alzheimer's and was out of it, and she, she died shortly after. So... I never got to experience any of that, um, but I, I feel it. And, and having those moments, having her instrument, uh, bringing music to life, and it was it was just surreal. And I felt some connection to my family, my background, and the crazy Swedish grandma that I had. She's awesome. So you can kind uh, yeah. of, I kind of feel as though you know I can I can almost like a seance in, in some way. Not to get too weird about it, but it's almost like the spirit of the person who played it or owned it. Uh, is is there living in the instrument and so like will said if she was amazing like that there's no wonder that instrument sounded so incredible because uh she her spirit is is in it uh, so it that's cool. really beautiful mm -hmm. i i i like how you put that now so is the hazel gonna end up on any official new blue songs uh, already that that's what just happened this past oh, week fabulous. That was, okay that was a, yeah that was a new song we were working on and uh, a new old song, I guess, in COVID, you know, Justin and Eric have been cooped <laughs> up in the dungeon and, and they've been just writing like a new song literally every single day. It's it's quite amazing. Oh. And so when the play, I was like, oh, this, you know, when did y'all write this last week? It's like about a year ago. I was like, <laughs> damn, and I'm just not hearing it. So it's, it's uh, it was cool. But yeah, we song on the ride. I don't know when it's going to come out, but you just put it in the pile and keep moving on, right? For sure. Well, absolutely. Would you guys say that you have any other family heirlooms that are, you know, uh, possessions to you, like one of your most prized possessions, out maybe with music or outside of music? I I actually have my uncle Jim, uh, who passed away. I have his bass here at the studio, and it's everyone's favorite bass. In fact, it's being used right now in the C room by my friend Sam Houston. Is using it on a track right now, and the bass line is really cool. But it's like that instrument is I've had like Max Frost has tried to buy it off me like 10 times and I'm like, man, I can't, you know, um, but uh, 
Yeah, that was my uncle's bass, and I love that thing very much. And actually, it was my mom's sister, and my mom's watching right now. Hi, Linda. My mom's, she's out there. She's watching. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Ryan, Hi, do Mom. we call any? I, I'm, I hope that I'm the one starting the family heirlooms. I, I don't have musical parents and uh, not too many music musicians in my family, extended family, but uh, I, there's no instruments around. So I, I think I'm starting the collection now. Um, <laughs> this one in particular, this one's called The Spade. And uh, it's, it's quite a, made in 1888. And uh, so hopefully pass that one down to my kids. Um, they don't play any instruments right now, but you never know. I mean, they kind of have no choice, really. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we call them hard time. No. Uh, yeah. uh, you Don't get this one, for, this one for a dollar, this one for two dollar, all of it yeah. for five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, boy. So in addition to that violin, um, I have a piano that my mother bought my father. And it's one of the only things that survived a house fire we had um, oh, that wow. she actually she passed away in. Um, but I've gotten that piano. It's at uh, the old place and, uh, people are uh, Airbnb. People are getting to play it right now, but Nova's going to learn on it. You know, I've learned some piano on it. And my, uh, my addition to the heirloom will be this guy because yeah. I bought this new when I was 15 and it looks older than a real fifties Telecaster. So yeah, you could like awesome. scrape this off and clone me. <laughs> that, is awesome. that is all real neck DNA right there. <laughs> so many dead skin cells. Sweat. <laughs> Get yeah. off and clone Literally. me. Yeah. Really. It has fantastic. a cure to cancer in there. I'm pretty sure. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, while not uh, an heirloom per se, I actually um, am a, a big collector of, of guitar picks from shows that I've been to. Nice. Uh, do you guys have any picks or, you know, drumsticks or anything else from, from other bands who you've either a fan of that you played with? that you got to take home. Mm, I'm looking through my little jar of, of, of history right now. And, uh, I have a bunch. Oh, I've got this one. That is. Oh, famous, that guy's awesome. The famous Matthew Nobisky <laughs> from the foil tour. Uh, Lucky. I don't even have one of those. How'd man. you get that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, I, have, I have a 311 pick from their music tour back in 93. Oh. I still cool. have a, yeah. Oh, like the Eagles. There's yeah, the Joe Eagles. Walsh. There's a, yeah. there's a Joe oh, Walsh. Cool. Joe Walsh. Uh, oh, yeah. That's, cool. That's incredible. Yeah. It was amazing. I didn't go to that show, so who knows how I got that pick. I think I found it on the floor somewhere in the, in the Enormo Dome or something. It, you know, it just I, I lose picks so fast, like they just—it's <laughs> like they disappear to an alternate reality or something. Yeah. Like, oh, I'd start the day with five picks in my pocket because it's like you never know when you need five picks, and then by the end of the day, they're—I can't find them anywhere. <laughs> I find them in my dryer a lot. Yeah. <laughs> that's right where they belong. Lots of picks get stuck in the like little things of the dryer, and I'm like pulling picks out of there. I, uh, I one of mine that, that I got when I, I saw uh, when I saw Herman's Hermits and I and I asked what? Um, uh, for a pick and he's like, yeah, that's what they're for, right? To give away. That's yeah. <laughs> we don't use. That's them awesome. Twice. You it saw was, Herman's Hermits. Wow. There's a oh, Kelly Clarkson. Oh, that was a Clarkson. Yes. That was a looking pick too. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't go. To, I didn't go to that show either. So. <laughs> They just a lot of info on that. <laughs> yeah. I found them in my dryer. I don't know how they ended up in my dryer. <laughs> the time machine. I found them yeah. in Matt's dryer. Yeah. <laughs> Milo, who else do you have? I know you said you have meatloaf. Oh yeah, I have, a, I have a meatloaf. Oh, it's bad. Oh. Dude, That's awesome. This, this, is, this is the prize possession of of the collection. I also have a a, a, a Nancy Wilson. From yes. heart. Oh, nice. Super hard because she doesn't actually, she doesn't throw her picks. How'd you get wow. it? Uh, post, she just throws them to the, um, same with meatloaf actually, just throws them on the, on the stage. And like, so, um, because I was like front row for both, of, for both of those, um, I was like, yo, let me, you know, so like the stage hand would come and throw, you know, nice. um, I, I got the Herman's Hermits. Uh, I have a, uh, Neil Gerardo Spider from Pat Benatar. Oh, that's awesome. Um, I have an Ario Speedwagon. Yes. 
You got some. You got a uh, yeah. way better collection than I do. <laughs> All uh, of the dryers. So this, this is from Taking Back Sunday. Oh, nice. They said that they're just generic picks because, like, it's just it's literally just a generic pick, yeah. um, because <laughs> their record company doesn't buy them any. So, <laughs> you know. Wow. Well, that's actually, a great question. But nice to put them on. Put them on blast. There, there you go. go. Well, Milo, what do you Cheap think? Skates. Do you want to go to the? Milo Beasley frequently asked questions. Shall we absolutely, do that? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. So, guys, I have a show uh, on on the YouTubes as well, and and on each episode, each interview, I ask the guest. The Milo Beasley show frequently asked questions. So these are the same questions I ask every guest. Are you guys ready? Oh yeah. All right. Question number one: Who was your first celebrity crush? Oh, that's easy. It's uh, Tiffany Amber and Kelly uh, <laughs> Kapowski, Saved by the Bell. Boom. I get it. I know mine. Ryan's thinking. I'm going to go ahead and jump in. Tatum O'Neill was my first one, but then um, Little Darlings. And then, uh, but when I got a little uh, older, I've, al I've always had a, a thing for Natalie Portman. Ooh. Oh, Queen Amadala. I still love Natalie Portman. <laughs> Good I still choice. love her. <laughs> if you're watching, Natalie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. I know I'm a stick in the mud, but I really don't know. Like, I don't. I can't tell you one. Okay. Sorry. That's all right. It's stuck me. I got, you know, like, as soon as we end, I'll be like, oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's what happens. Happen. That's yeah. what happens every single time. Or in the midst of another question, they'll just like yell out a name and be like, Topanga. And I'll be like, oh, Topanga. Definitely Topanga. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm go, I'm go sorry, Natalie, but it's Topanga. <laughs> All, right. All right, Milo, do I get to read your second one? Absolutely. Okay, let's put up the second one. This is the second question from the Miley Beasley show. We got it. Okay, ooh, what's your guilty pleasure song? That's a good question. Boom, clap the sound of my heart, the beat goes Yeah, on. baby. And boom, clap the sound of my heart. Charlie X. Charlie X. Um, yeah. I really like uh, Rosanna by Toto. Um, uh, but Toxic Britney Spears is definitely like my most guilty pleasure song. That's a great song. That's a great song. Free Britney. Absolutely. Free Britney. Yeah. Hashtag. I agree. Oh, uh, man. I, I'll, I'll have to go with uh, Warrant, Cherry Pie. <laughs> Reminds my brother like some hair metal. The best part is like he does do 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 this diminished run at the end of the solo and he goes, trained professional. Love that song. Good choices. Fantastic choices. Fantastic choices. I especially love the Britney. All right, so question number three. This is a if you had to, not to upset PETA, but this is a if you had to, if your life depended on it, would you rather fight one horse-sized duck or a hundred duck-sized horses. Horse. <laughs> this is my favorite question. I want this the horse awesome. size, the, the horse size duck because I want to attempt to ride that duck. You know, yeah. I think Nova would think I'm an absolute boss. She's in love with her little duck in the bath. She just what you try and take her out of the bath, she has to take the duck with her. She starts crying. So if I pulled up on that, if I could beat the duck in the fight. And ride it and pull up on it like a true Viking warrior that I am. Forty percent Viking blood, by the way. Just want to let you know. Forty percent. Uh, that awesome. like, it's like the true Duck Dynasty, right there. Yeah. And, and if I die, dynasty. oh well, a duck killed me. A big duck. I don't give a duck. <laughs> I would go with I would go with the hundred duck sized horses because uh, those man ducks are they can be mean. And I those, mean, they're strong, but like large you know, duck mouth. Have you ever seen the inside oh, of a duck mouth? It's crazy. I, I actually been attacked by a, what was it? Like a, a goose or a swan or something. A swan oh, maybe. Swans, I was in a canoe insane. and it, and it just like attacked uh, my friend and I in the canoe and it scared the crap out of me, man. I don't, I would not <laughs> want to fight a giant duck. That sounds terrifying. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> duck that. <laughs> duck that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. No ducking way, man. <laughs> Ryan, I'm gonna go with the ducks, uh, the hundred duck-sized horses as well. I think it would be, it would uh, probably gonna upset a lot of people. I would just drop kick a horse, like <laughs> that's how I roll. 
know. You gotta do what you gotta do, you know. You do in the scenario, hundred of them. <laughs> Not to upset Peter, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. You right. Yeah. All right. Here's the next question from the Milo Beasley show. What is your favorite movie quote? Ooh, that's a. <laughs> Life's a garden, dig it. <laughs> good, good one. My. Uh, mine is definitely a. Uh, what did the jammies look like? I don't know. They had Yodas and shit on them. <laughs> Anybody know I what like, that's from? Yeah. Oh, Arizona. that's amazing. Raising Arizona. That's okay. Raising Arizona. Classic. So, uh, yeah, Bad Santa, when he asked the kid, he's like, What's with you and the bleeping sandwiches, kid? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's a good one. so funny. Yeah. I have a second one, and only because uh, it's Matt's favorite movie, Trading Places, and it came on the other night. And, and Matt is like the king of quoting on the bus. And, <laughs> and, and I heard one, and I forgot where it came from because he said it before, and then it played, and I just laughed and laughed. I was rolling around, and, and my wife's like, what are you laughing at? I was like, I was like, man, I just remember this was quote that Matt says all the time. It's the one from when he's in jail, you know, and – the, the two black guys stand up, and the one guy, he's like, it ain't cool to be a job turkey. It's so close to Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, and Matt said that, oh, so many quotes that Matt has said from that movie. Pretty good. That, that's why that, per that period of movies, like the late 80s, all of those movies are all quotable. Like Better Off Dead and Trading Play, like all Better, those movies. Oh my gosh, all, Better Off Dead is. Oh, you so can good. quote every line from that movie, and I feel like that's like the, these days. Like, yeah, there's some good movies out there, but you can't quote them like you could back in the '80s, man. Those no, were the well, best. Can you do some you. Sling Blade, Matt? Yeah. Some Sling what Blade impressions. Sling Blade oh, impressions. Actually, Ryan does a pretty good Sling Blade. Most of the That boy lives inside his heart. That's an awful big place. <laughs> that's that's actually a good quote. That's a hell of a quote, actually. Wow. You know, we we uh, in the van and trailer days, we had a little TV, and we would we would just play these movies over and over, like like uh, B Rad G from the Boo, what was that Malibu's Most Wanted, and oh yeah. And, uh, but you know, you have like um, Talladega Nights and and um, Tropic Thunder, and those are probably the most quotables in the last few years that have come out. Mm -hmm. Uh, I definitely like Tropic Thunder. It's pretty quotable, but uh, probably oh, basketball. Yeah. Remember basketball? basketball? That was when I that was when I first joined the band. We watched that. We had a VCR in the living room, and we watched that movie over and over and over again. <laughs> wow! All right, uh, kick that. Uh, what's yes. your favorite movie quote? Oh my gosh! Okay, so the first thing that like comes to mind, and I'm biased, Milo, because you're joining us tonight, has to be something probably from Back to the Future, like something like. Your kid's money. Something's going to be done about the kids or something like <laughs> yeah. that. Terrible yeah. impression. I, I'm not as good as Ryan with my impressions. But. Oh, yeah. um, from Back to the Future, mine is definitely, do you know what this means? Yeah. It means this damn thing doesn't work at <laughs> <at> all. <laughs> that a good one. But my, my most recent, and uh, especially those with young kids, are going to this, going to be able to relate. But it's from, <laughs> Happy, it's from Happy Gilmore. It's uh, Ben Stiller when he goes, you will go to sleep or I will put you to sleep. <laughs> well, I pretty much yeah. say that to my 11 month old every night. <laughs> oh, your fingers hurt? Well, now your back's gonna hurt. <laughs> duty. You can just pull landscaping <laughs> duty. <laughs> so good. <laughs> oh, love it. Um, okay, well, we have a couple more questions. These are addendum questions to the original Milo one. So Milo, do you want to uh, read the next one? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, so would you rather live in a walking dead environment or a quiet place environment? Uh, sorry, I just I just want to jump in. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I, no, go for so, it. We already so, know. I, we already know. <laughs> oh, my walking dead. Okay, here we go. So yeah, you know. Are you on action cam? Right there, <laughs> my walking dead poster. Um, I fantasize about the apocalypse <laughs> what? every day. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I like, I'm constantly thinking about like, oh, this would be like the perfect place to like hole up and get supplies if there was a zombie apocalypse. I think about it constantly, like all the time. I, I would love that. I think it would be awesome. I love The Walking Dead. Let's do and, it. 
and and Jacob Young, who was on the last time with you, I just saw the trailer for the new season. Exciting stuff. I got to see some behind the scenes videos and I'm very, very, very excited about it. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. This this season's going to be great. Okay. I'm really jealous. All right. Walking Dead for sure. Just a couple things. I would say Walking Dead for sure. Because in Quiet Place, you couldn't jam out on the guitar, man. You'd you'd get killed right away. Yeah. But I love killing zombies too. I love watching that show. I watched the. What, I, I'm blanking on the name of his bat, of Negan's bat. Lucille. 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 There you go. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's the name of B.B. King's guitar, too. How could I forget? But Justin, yeah. <laughs> our, our Europe tour two tours ago, Justin totally, in all those photos, looks like Negan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. He even had the, like, was it an ascot? Is that what you call yeah, it? Yeah, an ascot, yeah. 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 <laughs> Ascots are underrated, by the way. I agree. <laughs> so, Ryan, what's your... I haven't seen a quiet place, but I, I understand the premise of it, and so I, I would, I would have to say, the zombie apocalypse as well. Just, you know, it's like you get, you just get to kill things, you know. And I guess that's they're already of, dead. So they're all, they're already <laughs> dead, and they're already dead. I, I don't know. I think the commandments go out, go out at that point, right? <laughs> I just recently watched that. Uh, what was it, Matt? I texted you about Army of the Dead. Oh, oh no, Army of the Dead. Dead. That was fun. Yeah, Dead. that was a fun movie. Very campy, but uh, yeah. it was, I love the tiger. That's my favorite part. Of the yeah. Tiger. The zombie yeah. tiger. The yeah. The zombie fucking tiger. I mean, come on. That was the It was shit. awesome. <laughs> like, I, it was right. Really right. Like, ah. <laughs> I'm really surprised that you haven't seen A Quiet Place because you're a big sci fi guy. That's a great movie. Both of yeah. them are really good, actually. Yeah. yeah. You should see it. Yeah. I, I will. I will. Put it on the list. On, on, then, on the Netflix list, right? <laughs> All right. Here's the next question. If there was a sandwich made after you, what would be on it? Oh, God. <laughs> can I jump in again? I know, <laughs> can, I, can I say that first? It's like an RX bar on top of an RX bar on top of an RX bar. With like a I just piece, had one. A little piece of German bread from backstage. Yeah. Ooh, um, okay. I actually love peanut butter and pickle sandwiches. They're really good. And um, my uh, one of my buddies that actually works at the studio was telling me to do peanut butter and pickles on pumpernickel. And you grill the pumpernickel, and I tried it, and it is badass. It's really good. I'm dead okay. serious. I know it sounds terrible, but it's not. It's awesome. Peanut butter and pickles, for real. It's, I'm serious. I'm dead serious. Okay, Try so it. You won't regret it. This tour... You're going to make me a peanut butter pickle sandwich the way you would do it. I'm going to try it. it. I'll do it. Okay. I'll try it. I'll grill it it for you. Okay, man. I'm down. I need to know this. (laughs) It's really good. Okay. Ryan? (laughs) (laughs) Not much of a sandwich eater. Um, I I guess I have a dual thing. My son and I, though, my son is seven. And so he's, you know, it's, it's dad and son time a lot. And so we... Uh, we, we do this gourmet sandwich, and so we made the gourmet sandwich, and we pretty much put whatever we want on it and whatever's in the fridge. And so sometimes, <laughs> be, you know, lettuce and and roast beef and Cheetos and then like Cheetos mustard, and they're they're pretty awful, you know, because it's it's let's let's just experiment and put it together and see if it works, right? Um, but if I had like you know, my uh, uh, feel-good sandwich, it would definitely be a double-decker peanut butter and jelly sandwich with Doritos. Yeah. You got to tuck the oh, Doritos yeah. in the sandwich. Right in the middle. With with uh, strawberry um, jelly. Strawberry. Hmm. Rizzy, what about the fluff, though? Oh, God, Will. So, <laughs> I know you. So, <laughs> where's the fluff so at? Just, just to construct the sandwich. So you have peanut butter on the outside, right? And then on the inside, one side will have fluff. You guys know what fluff is? Yes. Is that the marshmallow? Yes, the marshmallow fluff. Right. But it's not like it's not like jet marshmallow cream, right? This is this is Yankeeville, like North New Hampshire style. Uh, actual, uh, it's 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 an oddity on its own. But uh, so one side will have fluff, and then the other side of the center piece of bread will be jelly. And then two layers of Doritos on either side of that. And so there is the true wow. construction of the sandwich. So yeah, you so. should make that and then sell it at the shows. Yes. Oh. 
Oh, well, there wouldn't be anything to sell because I would eat it all. <laughs> and it's probably why my diet will just goes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Like, why can't I lose weight? Well, stop eating <laughs> double decker PB and J's. Yeah, it's, it's unique, it's unique for sure. Uh, I just eat a sandwich full of stress, uh, a stress sandwich, <laughs> a delicious. stress sandwich, delicious. Uh, Matt, Michelle wants to know what kind of pickle. Um, any, I guess, any just any standard, uh, like dill pickle, okay, would be fine, okay. No, because yeah. they're they want the recipe clearly. So, <laughs> oh, you know what? There, there actually is a brand um, that's really, really good, and I get them. Uh, I can't think of what they're. I'll, I'll remember it. I'll put okay. it. I'll, I'll make an Instagram post. I don't know. You I, let us know. I'll let you know. I'll put it out there <laughs> into the world. But they're damn good pickles. You can't. Don't just get just cheap Velasics or something. Uh -uh. Get some good I stuff. A, I got a real easy one for you. Just go to go Thundercloud. Ahead. Order the Austin Club has uh, oven roasted chicken breast, guacamole, and bacon. Boom. Yeah, bacon. you can't go wrong with that. Yeah, I'm into it. All right, Milo, let's try to get through maybe one or two more questions before we got to let these gentlemen go. So you want to ask the next one, Milo? Yes, yes. So what cinematic movie or TV property would you like to see one of your songs featured in? That's a good question. From any of your bands. <laughs> um, I would definitely say a sitcom because you get paid every single time they play. Like if it's in the theme song, you get paid every time they airs. So um, something that's been around a really long time. Like I, wanted, I want the new theme song <laughs> to do <laughs> like CS. <laughs> did they still do like NCIS and all that? Oh, I'm sure. There's like yeah. eight no, versions. I'll, uh, let's be let's be real. Let's be artistic. I would say, I would love to have a song in a Wes Anderson movie. I think that would be awesome. Oh, that's okay. Just yeah, hmm. I'm into it. I'll go with the Quentin I'm Tarantino with. movie because that stuff is always like dope. A lot of vintage yeah, guitars. Like, he kind of brought back Dick Dale's career, man. And surf rock. Yeah. Yep. With mm -hmm. Pulp Fiction. Hell yeah. Oh yeah. I like that. Ryan. Ryan's deep in thought. Well, I was, you know, I was thinking of the most epic moment that, you know, like you could have your music in where it was just the most awesome, like the most powerful moment. And I was thinking if there was a moment where young, young um, Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader were in the same scene together and they were battling the same time for the same reason and they were just mowing down these you know and just like Aah! and your song was like to go in and you know and everybody's like that's the most epic cinematic scene of all time and, like, <laughs> and that's my music behind <laughs> love it you think that so the next star wars okay or or you know or somebody on a like a 50 caliber machine and just going Aah! i know yeah. I'm sorry guys no it's amazing <laughs> I'm visualizing. I'm trying to picture the song. Just turn my feet off if you want. Just <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we won't have that guy back next time. He's, he's awesome. You're amazing. <laughs> All right. We got one final question for y'all. So here it is. The last question. If you had to be on a deserted <laughs> island with another band, oh, what man. band would it be? Oh. Oh, wow. It can't, it, it can't be the Rolling Stones because they won't be around. <laughs> Too much longer. They're too old. <laughs> well, actually, that's not true. Keith, Keith just keeps going. I Keith mean, Keith will probably babies. outlive oh, no, no, all no, of no. us, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good choice because he can climb up the coconut tree and get the yeah, coconut yeah. for you, right? <laughs> <There> you <go. laughs> God, what band? It has to be. I like you never know what you're gonna get with a, with another band though. So it has to like I would want to pick a band that we know, you know, so you know that they're cool dudes. Um, for me, I'd probably say, um, I would say I'm dynamite actually, because I, they're like, like, I love those dudes and they're hilarious. So they'll just keep us laughing the whole time. I picked them. Good choice. Okay. Yeah. Ryan, Will, what are you thinking? Well, we'll go ahead, buddy. Man, 
I, I don't have anything that's like like glaring off the top of my head or really obvious, but uh, let's go with uh, ACDC because it'd be funny to like hear dudes talk in Australian accent. Yeah, and, <laughs> and rock guitars. It'd be cool. It'd just be cool. Like you'd feel like you're in a tropical area because Australia is kind of a deserted island continent thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then you they get seem down to earth. Right. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. All right, Ryan. I, I'm gonna go with my old my old favorite, the, the band that probably had the biggest influence on me was Depeche Mode. And uh, but but one one caveat to it is that that it, Beethoven had been the keyboard player for Depeche Mode. Because I always people ask me, they're like, oh, if you could go see a band back in the day, and I'm always like Mozart or like I want I would love to see Beethoven conduct the Ninth Symphony. You know what I mean? Like that would be the moment in time that I would pick. But the, the, the thing about being on a deserted island, though, is like you got to hang out. Like, right. there's so many <laughs> bands that are like, I want to go see them, and they're awesome, but they're probably they probably just suck as human beings. They're probably not fun to be around at all. Well, Matt, you have you know? to you have to consider like you said, Rolling Stones, and you know Mick Jagger's reputation. And then if it's just you guys and Mick Jagger <laughs> on a deserted island, yeah, <laughs> I mean. Music. It would be lonely. A <laughs> <laughs> Plus, it's hard to relate to those guys, you know? Like, I don't know what it's like a mansion in France. Come on. Fair enough. <laughs> be relatable. I would, I would like to see you guys, because I, I know you've played with them before. I'd like to see you all on an island with Kiss. I feel like that would be a party. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. 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 Gene Simmons would be trying be, to sell you uh, coconuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put the logo on the coconut. I have, yeah. It would make you climb up the tree to go get it, too. That <laughs> you'd pay him for that pleasure. I, I yeah. would actually love Kiss, but it would have to be with Ace Freely on guitar, man. Like, Ace was, he's the OG. He was awesome. And I've heard yeah. he's an awesome guy, so. Ace I'm would excited have to, be there. to see him. Yeah, Ace is opening for Alice on this upcoming tour. So. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, wow. I'm very excited. That's well, cool. on that note, once again, we are so excited to see you guys on the road. It's happening soon. Can we bring up the graphic one more time with all of your upcoming dates? And Whoa. and while we're wrapping this up, oh my gosh, September! It's like it's almost oh, this is happening. Wait, it's we're all happening. shows. Wow. <laughs> I'm squinting. Wow. That's a lot of shows. Yeah, that is a lot, lot of shows. Guys. Good luck sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. And then Europe, because I, I saw someone watching saying they're excited for y'all to come to Germany. So y'all oh, are going yeah. global. Dude, the new the new place we love now is Prague. I mean, Ooh. yeah, Amsterdam was fun for a few years, and now it's Prague. We just want to go to yeah. Prague at the time. Unbelievable. Well, before we do wrap this up, is there any final <laughs> thoughts that you guys want to leave us with? Uh, thanks for having us on. This is a, this has been awesome. It's nice to Thank interact you. with people. Yeah, yeah ten, I just can't believe I've been on here ten times. It I always know. flies by. I know. It always flies by. You oh, guys are so much fun. Oh, I want to yeah. say thanks to all the people who are commenting down below. I just saw Driver and and Kate yeah. create from Kate's from from Germany and uh, a lot of great uh, familiar names up there on on the ticker that we will be seeing very, very soon. So love all the fans. Can't wait to see you guys. You guys are the ones that keep us going. So God bless you. And thanks for, uh, for doing what you do for us. Exactly. Hi, Mom. That. <laughs> love you guys. Will, kicking ass. Will is like ditto. I love it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> before we do wrap this up, we just want to go over our upcoming guests that we have. So on Thursday, we're so excited to welcome Greg Proops from Whose Line This It Anyway. Uh, wow. Next week, we're welcoming Jake, the Man Scout Mountain. And, uh, he's also a host, a wrestler. And then we have drag superstar La Glancha Estrancha. We also have Alicia Taylor from the Cherry Bombs joining us. And uh, Karen Carnival, who is, she's in literally all the X-Files episodes. She's amazing. And mm -hmm. I'm so excited. You guys, thank you so much. This has it been such, like so much fun. I got a question. Yeah. Do, you, do you do like an on-screen audience? Because like, I would love to be on with, with Ladonja. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'll just be, can I just be a fly in the corner? And... <laughs> Please be our guest. <laughs> that would you be are more than welcome. <laughs> Absolutely. What a great lineup. What a great lineup. That looks great. 
Yeah. Oh, thank you. Well, I guess until we see you guys on the road, I guess we'll uh, see you guys real soon. So thank you yes. so much again. Thanks for helping keep me sane for the last year. I appreciate oh this. Oh my gosh. I know. It's here. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys Thursday. Au revoir. <laughs>